If you're curious about building automations directly inside of Airtable, you don't want to miss this video. Airtable has just launched a new feature to its pro and enterprise level plans that allows you to build automated processes directly from your database, not needing any connectivity with Zapier. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely swing by our website. I will include links in uh, below this video so you can check out all the different resources that we've put together for you there. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. We are talking about the new automations feature from Airtable. So looking at my screen here, you see that on the right hand side of my Airtable database, I have this new window that says automate your most common actions and gives me the option to create an automation. Now, I'm, as I said earlier, able to build an automated process directly inside of my database. So the way I access that, it's up here right next to the blocks. So if you're a pro Airtable user and you're using those blocks, now you have that automations option right next to it as well. So let's go ahead and just build an automation kind of from scratch and walk through the differences between why you might want an Airtable automation and also why you would probably still want to use Zapier or some other third party automation software if you need that. So let's walk through this. You see that once we start saying that we're going to create an automation, our first step is to name it. Uh, automation one is just fine with me for now. And of course, the first step to every automation is the trigger that we need to build. And if you're not familiar with automation, the trigger is that activity that will set the automation into motion, right? So it's the thing that, you know, starts the whole process over and over again. So let's imagine if we just, you know, were to pick a really simple thing, maybe we just want to send an email when we have a box checked inside of our database. So really quickly, let me build a really simple database here for let's say people. And I'll call this full name. And I'm going to have a first name and a last name. There's first name, here's last name. Uh, set up an email address. And I'll want to change this, of course, to an email field type. And then lastly, I can set up some something that will trigger this event. Maybe it's a status. So maybe we have, you know, like the option to send email, or maybe we use a checkbox, send email checkbox. And uh, inside of here, we can go ahead and bring in a checkbox. So basically what we want in this case, and I'll just pick on myself as a, you know, a test subject here. I will have a first name, I'll have a last name, an email address. And when we're ready, we're going to click that checkbox. And what we want is for that to be the thing that triggers this automation. Let me add a quick formula here so that we have a complete table and we'll be good to go. All right. So now it's pretty simple. We could imagine a process where people come into our database. You know, we, we contact people, we make new, uh, you know, connections. And when we're ready, we want to click this to send an email and the email copy might be the same thing every time. But it, of course, we want to send it to that particular person and you know, address it with some personal things for them. So include their name, etc. So how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, you'll notice that when we get into this trigger, we have two different options. The first option as a trigger is that we can, you know, trigger this automation when a record enters a specific view. So we can build a view with very detailed filters that make sure that the automation only triggers when certain conditions are met. This is the most commonly used trigger that we see very often for Airtable automation. Now, the other trigger is when a record is created. So once that record is you know started or, or is built or is created, then and only then does that automation trigger. So of course, we probably wouldn't want to use that second choice in this example because we don't have the email address. We don't have the first name to you know address the email to them. And we certainly don't have that box checked at the time that the record is created. So we're not going to want to use that second trigger. We're going to go with that first trigger, a record enters a view. Really quickly, before I get any further, I do want to draw comparisons and, uh, and contrasts between Airtable automation and Airtable automation using a third-party tool like Zapier. 
So really quickly, let's pop into Zapier and take a look at our trigger options from here. If we're triggering an automation from Zapier, you know, in tandem with an Airtable database, you shouldn't be surprised to see that we get the exact same two uh, trigger options, a new record and a new record in a view. So if you've been building automation using Zapier for a while, you're going to be feeling right at home building an Airtable automation because we have the exact same options here. So for our particular case, I'm going to opt to uh, trigger this when a record enters a view. And I'm going to create a specific view using filters. So I'll create a new view here, and this is going to be my send email view. And, you know, leveraging the power of filters here, I'm going to make sure that only when conditions are met, does a record come into this view. So I want to make sure that we have a first name. Otherwise, how am I going to address the email? So first name, uh, first name is not empty. I'm also going to make sure that we have an email. So first uh, email is not empty because if either of those conditions exist, then how do I send an email? And lastly, I want to make sure that that checkbox is in fact checked. So of course, I don't have any data in this view at present because if I flip back into my other view, I haven't checked that box yet. So only when I check that box is that record going to appear in this newly created send email view. And you see that these three filters are applied to these fields in green. So the first name, the email, and the checkbox, all set. So only when those conditions are met, do I want this to trigger? Do I want this automation to go into motion? So I'm going to choose a trigger here, and it's going to be when record enters view. And of course, now it's going to ask me which table do I want this to uh, function from? I only have one table up here, and it's called table one. So let's go with that. And of course, I have two views to choose from. I only want to trigger this when uh, a record enters that new view I created. You know, pro tip here, if you are on the pro plan, you might consider locking down this view. This way, people don't make edits to this view and uh, remove these filters, which could cause your automation to kind of go haywire and start sending a bunch of emails. So definitely lock down your views if uh, if you have that capability once you have applied the filters that you want. You'll see from here, if I want to come in and make changes, I have to first unlock the view before I can do anything else. So it's an extra precaution to make sure that your automations don't misfire. All right, so uh, now that we've set this up, we can go ahead and run a test here. And what it's doing is actually going to pull in the example data that we have in there. And we can look at this by you know, just expanding this down and taking a look. And here is the information that it's found. The first name, the last name, the email, Again, this is very similar to how Zapier works. You know, so the same steps here, this should feel very, uh, very familiar to you if you are already building automation there. So lastly, or the second step, I should say, is going to be the build of the, uh, of the actual step. So let's move on to that. So I'm done with this. I need to add an action. So we've, we've, correctly created our triggering event, which sets the automation into motion. Now we want an email to be sent. So here's where things start getting a lot different from your current options in Zapier. You'll see that at present, we only have six different things that we can do uh, as an action from this automation. We can send an email, we can create a record, we can update a record, we can run a script, and those four exist inside the Airtable ecosystem. And then externally, we can connect and put a message to uh, Microsoft Teams or to Slack. So if you use Teams or Slack for inner office communication, this is a very powerful tool to use as well. But this is where, you know, there's a stark difference between performing Airtable automation inside of Airtable or using it in Zapier. And the truth is Zapier connects to 1700 different apps or thereabouts, probably even more now. And frankly, there's a lot more automation potential when you have that much connectivity. So if you're doing something simple inside of the Airtable ecosystem, that's when you're really going to leverage the power of automations inside of Airtable. But if you need to do something like talk to QuickBooks or anything, you know, more complex than just Slack or Teams, then you're probably not going to want to use the automations directly inside of the database. That being said, this is very new. They only just came out of beta. I am I would be surprised if they don't make some massive strides in this in the near future. So I would, I would expect there to be a lot more uh, connectivity to different, uh, different platforms as well. But let's go ahead, since in this case we want to send an email, let's look at what that looks like. 
So just as in with Zapier, we can now access data from the previous steps in our automation. So recall the first step of our automation is that a record enters this view. So if I want to get that to email address, I need to actually access the field values from that record and just tell it what I want to pick up. So the syntax just says step one is the trigger. I'm bringing in the email address that we acquired in step one. And uh, this is going to be test email. That will be the subject here. And uh, we can use markdown syntax for rich, rich text formatting. I'm not going to bother with that. Instead, I'm just going to say hi. And I do want to bring in that first name. So we are going to hit that plus button. Again, get access to that first name that came out of step one. And so just scrolling down here, pull that. So hi, first name, comma, this is your test email. And we'll just sign it off. So I'm going to go ahead and run a test here. All right, it took just a moment, but you see that that email did pop in now. So it came in, says it actually comes from Airtable Automations, and there's a no reply email address here. This is one of the big differences between using Airtable to send an email or using something like Zapier. With Zapier, you can actually set up your Gmail account so that email comes from you, actual your email address, or if you're using Microsoft 365, you can do that as well. So this email comes from Airtable Automations, and that's a little bit of a sticking point for me. If this is used internally, fantastic, this is great, but it's not really the way that I would want to send out some you know, customer or client facing emails. Uh, but it comes in as we would expect. It filled out, you know, the variable here. So in this case, you know, it used my first name. This is your test email. And then it signed off with, with me. So let's go ahead. And now that that's all set, let's give that uh, another look at the Airtable pricing page. So we can actually pop into Airtable pricing and really quickly take a look at what options are coming with this automation. So I'm going to do a quick search for automation and you see that automation gives you a certain number of runs per month. 50,000 is what is uh, on their pricing page at present. And you have one year of history for that. This is quite a lot of runs because Airtable counts a run as every time an automation is triggered. So you could have up to 25 different action steps inside of that automation. And provided that that only gets triggered one time, then it only counts as one run. That's a lot of automation for uh, per month. I mean, 50,000 of those per month is a lot. So this is really, really exciting because if you're doing things, again, internal to the Airtable ecosystem and don't need to go connect to other software, this is massive. So one other thing I do want to point out before signing out here is that the automations help that are set up for Airtable support are really quite good. It goes into detail about what I wrote or what I was talking about here, the six different options for you, and gives you a lot of different tips about how to set up a proper uh, automation. So a lot of things to consider when you're setting this up, but do check this out if you have questions about this. Uh, it's definitely an important you know, part of getting this all set up. So lastly, I would point out that one thing that you can do with the Airtable automations that you can't do with Zapier is you can use it to run scripts. And I think that this is probably the most powerful part of automations right now. Because if you are currently leveraging scripts inside of your Airtable database, by the way, that's accessed by going into your blocks and scripting is, is right here. You can write a script, but you can't trigger this script in an automated fashion. So you can write a script if you're uh, fluent in Java. And you can just, you know, write in something nice and have it do this, you know, whatever the scripting action is, you, you can have that performed. The trouble is there's no way to set this up to be automated. So if what you want to do is have this script run on like a schedule, you can now build a trigger inside of your Airtable database that actually works alongside of the automations and the, and the scripting block and get all this stuff automated. So this is a really powerful upgrade and I'm excited to start leveraging this more with our clients. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like a little bit more help, do check out our website. We've put together a lot of resources for you. We offer a blog that has our videos posted on a weekly basis, as well as our crash course. You can also explore our services. If you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, you can book an hour with one of our Airtable experts. 
You can also check out our online programs that we've built, including unlimited group coaching. And if you just want it done for you, we have an option for that as well. You can hire our team to build it for you from scratch. So take a look at our website, ask any questions that you need or have, and looking forward to connecting with you soon.